Hello everyone, it's Laurie from Quick Scrap Craft, and today I have a process video for you that introduces the uh, November Challenge Yourself theme, which is to make a grid design. Now I'm using some Simple Stories 3x4 cut aparts to help create my grid on this very neon green 12x12 cardstock that's just been in my stash when I purchased a pack of cardstock from Michael's like probably last year. It's been a long time. Um, and I'm going to pair these three by four cut aparts with these two photos of me trying on clothes inside a White House black market dressing room last summer. Um, after I made this layout, I filmed my layout share video, which is already up on the channel. So check that out if you haven't seen it. And I went, I took all those um, layouts and I put them in order. And then I put them with all my other finished layouts in order. And I realized... I've already scrapbooked these photos. Um, so uh, this is why I don't like scrapbooking pictures out of order. I'm I'm hardcore chronological photo scrapbooker. And when I don't stick to that rule, stuff like this happens. And I end up scrapbooking photos that I've already scrapbooked. So right now, both of these layouts are together with the intention that I will just put both of them in my album. However, what I'm thinking is using this layout as a um, sort of save for later layout. And I can always, for the most part, I think I could replace the two photos. And I would have to replace the journaling as well, but I think that would be easy to cover up based on the design of that, that bottom middle cut apart. I think I could just put another piece of cardstock down on top of the bottom of that and add um, and add the journaling and cover it up. Because I hate to just be like, well, I'll just throw it away. Or like, what, like, what else are you going to do with a duplicate, duplicate photo layout? But I don't want to, you know, I, I put all the work into it. So I think I might just change out the photos. Um, and that'll be fine. I can, I'm sure I'm going to have photos of my kid that will also fit with this adorbs um, cut apart here that I'm using, or not cut apart, um, cut file. This is a Bella Boulevard, whatever it's called. Um, hold on, I have the thing in front of me. The Bella Boulevard cutouts. Um, I have, I had a few left from this, um, this pack. It's the Adorbs. It's got Learn and Play, which I already used on a layout uh, a couple months ago. And then I still have Cuteness left to use. I'm assuming they still make these. I, I know that I bought this one a long time ago. Um, but I think it's really nice that this is an option for those of us who don't have cutting machines, like a Cricut or a whatever, um, or an electronic cutting machine, I guess I should say. I have a Spellbinders Grand Caliber that I can use with, um, uh, what are they? <laughs> now I can't think of what they're called. You know, the metal stencils that you, you run through the machine, whatever. Um, but I don't have an electronic one, so I can't use cut files that you could like purchase online or whatever because I don't have a way to cut them. But this Bella Boulevard offers different designs or they used to. So I need to look to see if they still make any and if they have some new designs, because that would be cool too. So you're, so you're getting a little bit, um, of an in-depth look of how to use this. I did a process video a while ago where I did show you how to use these. Um, essentially, you're taking, if you didn't see that video, you're taking like different pattern papers if you want to do different ones for the backing, the backing of this, this outline. And um, I mean, you could use the same, you could use the same pattern paper for the whole thing. It doesn't really matter. So you're taking a piece of paper that they have, a, um, a template, you're putting it on top of your pattern paper and you can washi tape it down to make it stay. I usually just hold it and use small scissors to help cut, but then you just kind of cut around the template and then you have the right shape for your pattern paper and then you glue it either with red line, you know, fine tip glue, or you can do what I'm doing, which is using an Elmer's glue stick. I really like the way this one turned out because it's got the O has, instead of the, the, the center cutout, it's got a star in it, which looks really cool. And this is a nice big one. It's a nice way to add a big title to your layout. And it was really easy to just add it kind of to the bottom of the uh, design, which is what you'll see me do in a second. So through the power of editing, I have finished my Adorbs uh, cutout 
and it's kind of just sitting off to the side drying a little bit I mean a glue stick doesn't take that long to dry but while it is drying and, and because I was using the glue stick and I got glue on my my cutting mat my creative memories cutting mat I did wipe that down with a baby wipe always have baby wipes handy in your scrapbooking area and I set that I moved that out of the way so that my paper didn't get you know, damp from the baby wipe. So the cutting, the cutting mat needed to kind of dry off a little bit. And while all of that is drying off, the glue is drying, I am putting down my photos and my three by four cut aparts. I am inking everything with a Tim Holtz Distress Oxide ink pad in saltwater taffy. I also have this in a Distress Oxide spray, which I really like, but I got this ink pad as a prize from Cutie Patootie Crafts, I believe. And so this is actually the first time that I've used it. I don't do a lot of stamping, with ink pads, but I do like to edge, I do like to ink the edges of papers and photos to kind of make things stand out a little bit. Sometimes you can't always see it on the edge of photos, but on the edge of pa the paper, you definitely can. And if you look up close, I just thought this color, the saltwater taffy, I just thought it would look nice against the dark green, or not the dark green, the neon green. It's kind of a brighter color. There are brighter colors on these patterned papers. The neon green is a bright color. And so that's why I chose to ink, the, ink everything with the saltwater taffy. Now, my grid is going to be a three by three. You could make it bigger. Uh, I have done sort of grid style designs before using three by four cut aparts and photos where I've really covered the entire page with uh, the grid. But for this one, just based on what I was using and the small amount of photos that I had, I just decided to keep this one two rows of three and keep them as the three by four. And then at the bottom is where that adorbs is going to go. So I just need to add the double-sided adhesive squares to that and stick that down. It's kind of going to overlap the bottom row just a tiny bit, which I really like. I really like when my stuff overlaps. Because this is sort of a random layout, I'm going to use sort of a random selection of embellishments. So I'm cutting out some very old I think that's Paige Evans right there. And I also have a unicorn that's sort of, it's a lenticular design. It's from a Chamel collection. I also won that as part of my Cutie Patootie Crafts prize pack, which is very exciting. And I'm just gonna create some embellishment clusters I'm not sticking anything down just yet because I actually, I ran out, of, ran out of adhesive before I finished this layout. So that's one of the reasons why if you watched my haul video, I had to go to Joanne and buy more adhesive. But I wanted to just kind of get a feel for where everything was gonna go first. And then I went back and I adhered everything. So I've got a little embellishment cluster up at the top right. And then I'm, I, I put a sticker, a Simple Stories sticker the, the bottom center cut apart where I'm also going to add the journaling. I just thought it would be nice to have something there. Then I'm trying to create another embellishment cluster to more the bottom left. Something I like to do, you've probably heard me talk about it a lot in scrapbook process videos, is groups of threes, diagonal lines, and creating sort of a triangle uh, with the embellishment clusters, which also kind of goes in a group of threes because they're three corners in a triangle. If you have not heard me say this before, then maybe you are not watching my process videos. And that means one of two things. You're new to the channel entirely. And I hope that if you are new here and you're watching this video, you're really enjoying it and you want to give it a thumbs up and that you also want to consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, and number two, you haven't subscribed to the channel. So definitely, whether you're new, whether this is, you know, the fifth process video of mine that you've watched, Definitely consider subscribing so that you don't miss other process videos and other scrapbooking things that I post throughout the month. And oh, I should also say real quick, this I said at the beginning, this is for the challenge yourself challenge for November. And if you don't know what that means, let me tell you, that's actually a giveaway. If you make a layout that has a photo of at least one photo of you somewhere on it and you follow the theme, which this month is grid design, then you can go to the challenge yourself blog, which I'll have linked below. And you can 
um, enter to win a prize, a prize pack. It's a pretty cool prize that they have every month. So definitely consider playing along this month and every month for your chance to win a prize. I think next month is going, next month is going to be really easy because it's just going to be a really easy theme. So if you're like, oh, I have trouble like coming up with grid designs. Well, number one, go to the Challenge Yourself blog where you're going to see not only you're going to find the information to enter, but you're going to see what the rest of the design team created. So there's going to be lots of different inspiration. And you can really kind of take the themes and do what you will with it, which I think is great. But if you're still like, oh, I don't know about this specific theme, wait until next month because it's going to be really easy. I promise. I'm not going to give I'm not going to give it away, but it's going to be an easy one. So come back on December 7th when that challenge goes live if you are interested in participating in that one. Um, I also have another bottom cluster by the title. I just kind of felt like I needed something else going on down there. And that sort of fixes the the triangle design that I was talking about earlier. A lot of these embellishments are simple stories, um, American crafts. I mean, Paige Evans is part of American crafts. Chamel is part of American crafts. And then there's, you know, specific American, American crafts, American crafts embellishments. Um, and here I'm going to, I'm going to do the journaling in that center bottom cut apart as well, and just kind of write down what was happening in these photos. But that's probably going to get covered up when I replace these photos with ones that I haven't yet scrapped. Anyway, so you could kind of say that this is like, those photos are just placeholders, um, I do I do scrapbook a lot when I don't have photos, but I'm just trying to use up supplies. I have several layouts waiting for photos that I need to that I need to do. So this is actually a way that you could create a layout, even if you don't have photos to put in there. You could still do this sort of design um, and just you know pop the photos in when they're ready. I don't know how often you guys scrapbook without photos, but it's some, it is something that I do on occasion. So if you would like to see more ideas for that, let me know in the comments below. Or if you have any specific questions about this uh, particular layout, the challenge yourself theme, or suggestions for other types of videos that you want to see, let me know in the comments too. I will, uh, I will take all of that into consideration. Writing my journaling using a uh, Zig Writer pink pen marker pen thing that I got at Michael's a while ago. Those are really good pens. I really like them. And these are the close-ups. You can see things in a little bit more detail. I hope that this video was inspiring for you. I hope that you participate in this month's Challenge Yourself Challenge. And I hope that you are inspired to get yourself on more of your scrapbook layouts. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to these social media channels and I'll see you next time.